We are now joined by Thorns defender Emily Sonnet ahead of uh, the biggest match of the season so far, the NWSL semifinal against Seattle. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but we're going to start uh, with something that happened about a month ago in a match against Sky Blue FC and then a little bit of the aftermath of it. We can show the video. It was a collision in the box where uh, you took a little bit of a hit to the face. It looked very painful. You were okay, thankfully. But what came from it was, was maybe the best part of it. One of the best sports pictures that you'll see. You certainly embraced it <laughs> with, uh, in, in a meme sort of way okay. on Twitter. First of all, what did it feel like? And then to kind of be able to play around with that image, what, what, how was that for you? Well, what did it feel like? It's actually one of those things you didn't really feel much. I think you just kind of go numb. Um, but when I saw some of these circulating, you know, social media, um, thought I need to do something. I need to come up with the best one. So I kind of talked to my friends, like, well, here's some extra, like, which one should I do? That was the winner. And then Caitlin obviously got in on the fun. But <laughs> no, that's, um, I don't think a lot of people have that picture. Yeah. You know, two fists to the face. So I'm, in a sense, lucky to have that. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> right? Like the exact moment of impact. Worse for wear afterwards? Or those, the hear players say they're trophies afterwards and everything yeah. that you look back upon. Does it go that way? Uh, no, I don't think this way. <laughs> no, no, no. But, no, that whole thing was, you know, funny, but um, really lucky, like, yeah. this wasn't. <laughs> significantly okay. injured, yeah. But, yeah you, you look at that, the, the commitment to go in for a challenge, and then um, I want to just take it a little bit further back. The commitment for you of, of self-improvement in, in your game, and uh, there was a couple of neat articles I was reading just about you being on the outside looking in for the women's national team. After you'd been on the inside, uh, you weren't being selected, right. and you really took it upon yourself to figure out, okay, why why wasn't I? What do I need to do in my game to be able to get me back there, which you, you're back in the setup now. What right. was that process like? Oh, yeah, I think um, talking to several coaches, not only uh, Jill, national team coach, but Mark, it was kind of taking that feedback mm -hmm. and how can I actually be applying that. So a big step going to Australia in the off season instead of just training at home. Um, went with, with Sydney FC. With Sydney FC, mm -hmm. uh, played, you know, I thought it was a great setup for me um, in terms of workouts and with the team, keeping up on my fitness. And then it just kind of put me, you've seen a lot of players, Abby Dowkemper, Sophia Huerta, I felt like it kind of put them on a launch pad, so to speak. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, other Australians who are obviously having, and the Matildas are having an amazing, you know, last few games, you know, uh, playing them recently in the Term of Nations. I just thought it was a great setup caliber of players to then take that feedback. Yeah. Um, and then try to apply it and then kind of be on that launch pad, so to speak, going into the season and or January camp and the next camps. If you look at it most recently, you played for the for the national setup against Chile in the first of, of two matches mm -hmm. against Chile. That you, you beat them both matches, but certainly the one that you played. And for you, how odd was it during the season before the big match against Seattle this past weekend to have to go away and play with the national setup before you play your final regular season right. match of the season to switch on and off mentally from club to country? How difficult? What was that? Yeah, um, you know, people, I think we've done it so many times um, that there is that difficult piece. I, I would say the most diff difficult piece, not only mentally am I going from, you know, world stage and like this game plan, but like now coming back, getting back into the team, uh, Thorns, and trying to grasp what they've been working on for the past two weeks mm -hmm. and then trying to give the same game plan um, with everyone else. But in terms of that and, you know, just recovery, you know, it is a lot of games, it is a lot of minutes. Yeah. Um, and how do you balance like, both game plan and getting back in with the team? That game plan for the Thorns certainly worked. You guys knew what was on the line and you came through with a, with a three to one win over Seattle last Friday. Uh, you now have to play them again. Uh, how, how, kind of one of the mental games of playing a team one week, beating them and having to turn right around and, and do the exact same thing playing them in the playoffs? Yeah, we've spoken about this a bit, you know, focusing on ourselves I think is a big piece what is that final you know what's that final piece that we can fine-tune what is is it the final pass is it our defensive game plan is it you know but getting ball wide getting the ball central um, and then in terms of them you know I think they're gonna be um, if not better having some of their personnel um, returning from injury so I think it's just having that how do we stick to a new game plan if not same game plan but fine-tune it um, and matching, you know, motivation. They're on a loss. They want to come back into Providence Park. It's kind of matching that motivation and then having that one step above. We saw at the start of the week Stand Together Banquets, which every year Timbers, Thorns, and T2, they come together. And what a great weekend it was, nine-point weekend, everybody right. was saying. But do you get a sense of just how much 
the, the fans around the area that they're caring for the club. And then when you build up to such a big match against Seattle, are you able to isolate yourself from all the hype and excitement going on before such a big match? Um, no, I mean, you mentioned a uh, Stand Together uh, banquet. I think it's really cool that we can see everyone, you know, in the community come together and us kind of celebrate what we can do and have the effect on the community. Mm -hmm. But only that, but seeing in our last game having uh, a sellout crowd, I mean, that's absolutely incredible. I'm feeding off that. Um, but in terms of, like, isolation, trying to, like, get back into the game and not having all this hype and everything, I think um, we have... We have a great coaching staff that brings us kind of back to earth and saying, here are the simple things, here's what we need to do, let's focus on ourselves, and let's go out and beat Seattle.